All right, today we're going to uh, try to get some OSPF on an extreme uh, switch or router. Um, these versions are older versions, not the current ones. So today we are running on 15.3. Uh, if you're on anything that's on like 21 or higher, some of these commands um, you're not going to have to run, which I'll explain them as we're going. Um, but this is pretty simple. I'm going to start from the very basics of starting off actually getting your VLAN and then all the way to uh, in configuring your OSPF and then showing um, how you can see that your OSPF is going. So if we can go in here, show IP route, we're going to see there's nothing on here right now, no routes, just a direct route. Um, and that's just basic. Uh, that comes standard with these uh, extreme switches. So we're going to jump right into getting this going and I'm going to start on switch one and then we'll move our way over to switch two. So we're going to create our VLAN. We're just going to do 100 and then this is the step that you don't have to do in uh, version 21 or higher. Oops. Configure, sorry, configure, and then tag 100. That's a step you don't have to do in 21 or higher. Um, this older version, you'd have to actually type in every single command. And then we're going to configure that to our port. And then we're going to give it an interface or an IP address. Do something simple. And then we need to uh, enable IP forwarding so it'll actually be able to transfer that traffic. Okay, and we will go to the other switch and get that set up as well. So we should be able to ping our other switch. And we can ping that right now. So we're good. We do an IP or show IP route. We will see we have a direct route connected to our other switch. So we're good there. Um, now we're going to get into the actual OSPF settings. So if we do a show OSPF neighbor, Nothing's going to show up because OSPF is not enabled currently. Um, so now let's actually go back to switch one and we will start from there and work our way through this. Uh, it's just a couple commands, which is, are very easy. First one is just OSPF router ID. Um, when, you can, when you enable OSPF, you have to have a router ID on every single router that you're going to enable it on and they have to be different. Um, it does not have to be an IP address. Um, for me, I always just do something simple, you know, like that. That way I just know this is going to be the first OSPF router uh, that is has OSPF enabled. Uh, the next one will be 2.2.2.2. Just do that. And then we're going to configure OSPF, add VLAN, and then our VLAN. <coughs> to add it to an area. Always your very first OSPF area is always going to be zero. Um, and then we're going to do a point-to-point -point link between these two. So that's all you have to do on switch one. Same thing has to be done on switch two, but remember 
since this is going to be the second router, we need to set up a different router ID. So this is going to be 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2. Um, and then configure OSPF add download. Okay, so now that we have that configured, we just need to enable OSPF, go back to router one, enable OSPF. Now it should be up and going. So show OSPF neighbor. And now we can see that we actually have uh, OSPF router two here, and we're in a full state meaning that everything is working fine. We can see what address is being pulled from on the second router. We can also see the VLAN that's showing up. If you actually do a show IP route, it'll show up that, oh, this is a direct route, yeah. So it won't show up as, as this being a OSPF route because it's not going through a secondary box because this is directly connected. But we are good to go. And that is how you enable OSPF. Um, if you are going to try to get out to push push inter or push uh, interfaces out to a um, an interface that is not running OSPF, you actually got to do an export. So that'd be an enable OSPF export, and then any static routes that you have on the router that you have, you're going to uh, export those as a cost. I would just do five, that's kind of the default, and then type one. That's kind of what I do. If that's, I use that to push that out to, you know, out to the internet um, on my first router. That's what I do. On your secondary routers and third routers that, that are not accessible to the internet directly, you don't have to do that command. That is only for connecting routes to external um, routes outside of your OSPF networks. That should do it.